is that mostly what you're focusing on the influencer stuff to, to drive traffic to rep view or are you guys doing cold email cold calling yeah you're a nimble team so like or has just the influencer marketing for your product been the best bang for your buck it's been, it's been the best bang for our buck. We don't, we don't do any cold emailing or cold calling. That's crazy. Today, my guest is Ryan Walsh, the founder and CEO of RepView. Ryan is a seasoned entrepreneur with over 25 years of experience in sales, who has built an amazing platform that's changing how salespeople make career decisions and how companies hire top talent. RepView under Ryan's leadership has become the go-to resource for sales professionals looking to understand their market value and for companies aiming to attract the best sales talent. Now, what sets RepView apart is its commitment to transparency and data-driven insights, which provides a unique lens into the sales industry that was previously unavailable. What I love about Ryan is his innovative approach to solving long-standing problems in the sales industry. He's not just building product, he's really creating a movement towards greater transparency and fairness in sales compensation and career development. Now, Ryan's deep understanding of the sales landscape combined with its entrepreneurial spirit has allowed him to identify and address a critical need in the market. So in this episode, we're going to dive into Ryan's journey, building RepView, exploring everything from their unique influencer marketing strategies to their expansion into new markets like medical sales. We'll discuss the challenges of building a network effect business, the importance of data in today's sales landscape, and Ryan's vision for the future of professional matchmaking at scale. So whether you're a sales professional looking to advance your career, a company trying to attract top sales talent or an entrepreneur interested in building a data-driven platform, I guarantee you'll walk away from this conversation with valuable insights and a fresh perspective on the sales industry. And if you enjoy this podcast, don't forget to subscribe and follow it in your favorite podcasting app or YouTube. It's the best way to avoid missing future episodes and it will help the podcast tremendously. With that, I bring you Ryan Walsh. How are you doing well. Yeah, how are you? Nice to see Good. you. Yeah, nice to see you too. You know what? I've never, I've never like seen you in the wild. It's yeah. crazy. So I, I don't know if this is a rare thing or what. <laughs> Having a beard is rare for me. My wife gets mad, so I'm just, yeah. letting, I'm just letting it grow until she says something to me. Usually, it's like a week and a half before this. So I'm just gonna see how long I can go before she she might just not be paying attention to me. So I think that's probably what it is. So yeah, guys, she may not even she may not even know that it's there. <laughs> look at that well i'll tell you what, i can't even grow a beard so i'm a little bit jealous so oh, yeah. Right. yeah yeah and, and, it took me a while but mine was like mostly by the time i was finally able to grow a beard it was mostly gray so uh, you know how it is oh yeah what age were you when, when, when that was i know i'm not supposed oh, that's to ask a little about ages, but... i'd say i was probably i could probably end of like probably not in college was not so good but maybe mid 20s i could probably grow a beard and it, I, there are a couple pictures of this when it's like fully brown um wow yeah, okay I see i'm in my 30s man and i still can't do it so no, it's just right. i've given up i've given up yeah right. <laughs> i've given up <laughs> totally well dude excited to chat with you today um uh, about just everything go to market right um you know rep view i think um what I've seen y'all do an amazing job of is like getting all the influencers, you know, B2B yep. sales influencers to post on LinkedIn, to be quite Absolutely. honest, like huge compliment, because I think y'all have done it better than most people that I've seen, yep. you know, and I think a lot of people are, are trying to model you right in terms of how you do it, what it's, it's got this like feeling of being a little subtle, but you still kind of know it's rep view at the, at the, you know, at a certain point, but it's yeah. also valuable to the niche that you're targeting. Yeah. Right. So it's a good mix, but man, I mean, I know we have the structure that we typically do, but you know, three go to market tactics yeah. that like, you know, have worked for you, which I think one of them is the influencer thing. Correct me if yeah. I'm wrong. And then we'll get into some stuff you're experimenting with and stuff that's failed. But yeah. Um, would love to start there. Like, how are you thinking about this whole influencer marketing when it comes to rep view and, and has it evolved? Like, I feel like I haven't seen it as much, but maybe I'm wrong. Um, yeah, I would say, yeah, it, we, we've been doing it since the very early days. I think one of our first, like our, our first partner, um, is the daily sales. If you know, daily sales, Daniel yeah, is yeah, yeah, they're, um, yeah. And we, we, we worked really well with Daniel and that, that's really, that's really more of a macro influencer, right? He has, you know, a million followers and it's, it's a business for Daniel. Um, yeah. And so, so with, with Daniel, that was great. And then, and then we started transitioning into, 
And I do think we were one of the first, if not the first, that was like, all right, we should just kind of let's try these what we call we call micro influencers who yeah. somebody that has a has a following. It doesn't even have to be a huge following. You know, even somebody with seventy five hundred followers or ten thousand followers on on LinkedIn um, will we'll reach out. And and what's really important is that they they already recognize rep you and get value out of it. So somebody that's a proponent of it, right? We don't we don't want to fake things, right? So everybody that posts for us as an influencer is certainly a user of RepView and, and sees the value and, and gets value out of it. And so how it's evolved is, um, you know, we, we've learned a ton, right? We would work with an influencer like, oh, and that, that's, that worked well, do a post every month. And we'd see, yeah, you'll wear out your audience pretty quick doing that. So then we might scale back to quarterly. And, and we just try and experiment with new people, new audiences. Um, there was a statistic that I, we, we actually measured this. I don't remember exactly how we measured it a couple mm -hmm. of years ago. And there was a couple larger kind of sales voices out there that we worked with. We were able to take their audience of large influencer A and compare large influencer B's audience. And, and my hypothesis was it'll be the same, right? And, and these are people that you would know. I'm not going to mention names necessarily because yeah, it's not yeah. really important, but people that you would know like, oh, this person they have X number of followers, like tens of thousands, maybe hundred plus thousand followers. Their, their overlap was small, was very small, like very small yeah. of followers. And I was, I was frankly, I was shocked. I was like, man, this is really interesting that the overlap is so small. Um, and we did it for like, not just like two big influencers to test it. We did it for like 15 you know, sales gurus or whatever you want to call people. Yeah. Um, just to see. And so that told us like that, that informed us of like, all right, well, we should, we should continue to explore new people. And, and we, we will work with somebody for a while and then the, the results might tail off. And, and mm -hmm. we don't see that as they, them doing something wrong or bad. It's just like, maybe you wore out that audience. So we'll say, all right, well, let's pause it. And then we might revisit, you know, in nine months or a year or 12 months and come back to that person and, and do more. Um, and, and the other, the other factor that's important for social, um, is for us, we, we do get a lot of, like a lot of the posts you see, they say they're kind of subtle. Like a lot of them are not paid influencer posts. They're just people who like got some value out of RepView. Maybe it helped yeah. them make a decision or they like the, the RepView t-shirt or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. And, and they're, and they just share. And, and so that's a really a core part of our strategy as well is just give people such a great experience with helping them with their careers and really staying true to our mission that people will just share, you know, organically, which drives a big network effect for us um, mm -hmm. as well. But, you know, I think influencers are always going to be part of our strategy. A lot of it, like, like, I think we were doing it way before LinkedIn started doing, you know, the brand partnership tag. Yeah. Promoted by yep. whatever. We, yeah. You know, we recommend all of our folks if they're, if it's paid from RepView, then it will have that. If it doesn't have that, they didn't follow our, our instructions for how to do it because yeah. the person who posts, not us, but actually the person who posts, you know, they could be the one that quote unquote gets in trouble for not doing it. Not. It's not oh, the, really? Yeah. It's not. Okay. I don't, I don't think that's a big risk necessarily, but yeah, you'll, you'll, you will see issues for like major Kardashian level influencers on like Instagram and things where they're not being clear about it. There's, you know, sec or, or um, you know, FCC. Um, yeah. Yeah. Issues with that, that you have to be cognizant of as well. So interesting. Yeah. And, and two, well, two things that you said, one was that like, you have to make sure that, um, influencers are like find value in your product. Right. And I think yeah. that's like the biggest thing. Cause I see a lot today where, in my opinion, people are dropping the ball because they're like, oh, we're going to pay these influencers, but the influencers have never used actually used the product or actually right. find it valuable. And you can kind of see through that a little bit, you know, yeah. um, which is interesting. So RepView, I mean, everyone wants to know who's getting paid, right? Like, so you guys have like a, a good yeah. moat in that sense where like any yeah. seller is actually going to find value out of that because like yeah. it has to do with how much you're getting paid, right? Yeah. <laughs> and like competitiveness in the market, who's paying the best, who's actually hitting quote, all that stuff. That's like the basics of what people want to know. So yeah. you guys kind of have that, that natural product um, value that everyone in that area is going to find. Yeah. Um, one, so one, I think thing it, I'll, one thing I'll add yeah. on the influencer piece too, that, yeah. that I think is important is that 
there's this the, the, over the last several years, there's been this rise of like solopreneur, like Wi-Fi money, like thing. Mm. And I think, I, I don't think that's necessarily right for everybody. I think there's certainly, you know, that there's value in doing that. But I think we, we actually are really excited for people that obviously are still gainfully employed. Obviously, most of them are in sales roles, but like, and they've got 5,000 or 10,000 followers, like they can make a couple hundred bucks from RepView. Like yeah. you can extract value out of building that network. And they're so excited to do that, right? Mm -hmm. no, it's not going to make anybody rich necessarily, but it's not a huge time sink. You have a cool post. Uh, and, and we'll give you a few hundred bucks, you know, and it's like, yeah. we, we're excited to enable really small, you know, creators to, to, to extract some value out of some of the work that they've put in to, to, to spend time growing their network as well, which is really something else that we like about that, that kind of this micro influencer. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And you hit the nail on the head too, about your thesis, which is like, on LinkedIn these days, like number of fault. And I think a lot of the algorithms are going these ways this way, but like yeah. number of followers doesn't really matter. <laughs> right. right? Yeah. I think it's, it's, it matters in some way, but like in terms of how much engagement you get, it doesn't really matter. Right. It matters for like the accolade, like, Oh my gosh, you know, I get people saying like, you have like 200,000 followers. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's like a, Whoa. And it's almost like a time and market thing. Like how long mm -hmm. have you been doing it is what I look at it as yeah. personally having yeah. that big number. Right. It's like, okay, they've probably been doing it for a while. That's it. Right. Um, versus, but that doesn't mean there's some people out there and I'll go out and say it. They have 15, 20,000 followers. They get way more engagement than me. Mm -hmm. And like, just have way more yeah overall engagement and i'm like heck yeah that's freaking awesome right? right so it's um it's definitely one of those things where i don't think that just it, it, linkedin has kind of always been like that whereas i think all the other algorithms are going that way right is it useful yeah. then it's going to get lots of engagement if, if people find it entertaining you know? yeah and, and also you know some of the very large followers it, it, they're not as targeted right if you're mm -hmm. if you're trying to engage like we, we you know, we, we've done stuff with folks with many hundreds of thousands and it just kind of hasn't worked. And it's just, so why hasn't it worked? It was like, I mean, we're, we're really targeting salespeople, right? Like, and yeah. that's it, right? If it's, if you're not in sales or CS or kind of very closely related, right? We're going to end up spending money and not getting, you know, the return that we need. It just doesn't, you know, it doesn't work. And so um, I think it's like, I know, like, I could go get a lot more followers very quickly if I posted, you know, random, you know, memes, memes, of, <laughs> yeah. memes and, and, you know, the, the aspirational quotes with a little picture yeah. and stuff, yeah. but like, I, I don't want to, it's not going to help the business, right? I'm not in it for mm. vanity metrics. I'm in it to help the business. And so if I, yeah, w w would 300,000 followers be great? Sure. But if they're all, you know, not relevant to my audience helps nobody. It doesn't, it certainly doesn't help me or it doesn't help rep you. So, yeah, yeah. It's, well, it's funny. Cause, um, me, Adam Robinson and Chris Walker, we're all like good, good friends. We're all in Austin. So we're all, you know, we hang out every, on the week, every week. And in our text group, we're like, looking at this new video thing that LinkedIn is pushing out. Right. And just this morning I have a video that I pushed yesterday, which is like, it has like 150 likes, you know, I think it's over a million views now. Wow. And I'm, and I'm like, what? But I look at it. I'm like, okay, has it brought me any money? No, right. <laughs> you know, right. like <laughs> it's like great, cool. But like, what is it doing? And so I'm kind of like, we're sharing our thoughts and my thoughts on it are like, Look, it's being pushed to a lot of people, but is it really leading to what I care about, which is revenue, right. uh, you know, and for distribute. And um, I have a friend that says, like, likes, likes aren't cash, right? Which is like, yeah. okay, great. So I'm looking at this million views. I'm like, cool, it's a little dopamine hit where it's like awesome. But I'm like, yeah. okay, either one, this, there's something interesting going on here and I need to figure out how to formulate the post to drive, you know, conversations yeah. or... I need to just continue, like, maybe I just can continue experimenting to find out what that is, you know? Right. And so, um, but it is interesting. I don't know. Have you guys toyed around with that on the influencer side yet? Or is it still too early for you on Are the you video? Yeah. Oh, video. Yeah we, yeah, we have. I think, um, I mean, I, I think 
my personal so repu repu account so so one of the things i'll say repu account has probably fifty five thousand followers or so so like it's okay um but people people and that's cool they we have some fun memes and some other things that are yeah. that are it's more a little lighter and then we'll mix in some sales strategy stuff um and i think people like that but people like hearing from people right people want to yeah. hear and so like yeah. i have like maybe twice that followers and my content was like people kept saying it was doing really, really poorly. My content was like doing really, really well over the last few months. And it wasn't video. It was just kind of, you know, we, we would post just stories. We're just telling stories is, is what our core strategy is. I yeah. would say over the, last, um, over the last three or four months, maybe the last two months, we've started doing video. And, and it's a lot of them, like I'm posting videos, not on my personal we're doing the videos and we're posting mm -hmm. them on our refu page and it's of mm -hmm. me like ask, answering a sales ish related question. Yeah. And so I'm going to probably, I'm going to start testing those um, as well um, with my personal page here in, in the next month or two as well. Um, yeah. To see, those, to see how those do. Yeah. Well, yeah, dude, because the stuff you write is amazing. Like, I'm like, whenever I see you, I'm like, why doesn't Ryan, well, it's hard to do stuff like that every day, right? Like being yeah. a creator myself, but yeah. um, yeah, you've got a knack for it. And I'm like, Ryan should, de like, I want to see more of Ryan, right? Because Ryan yeah. posts, like, you got some like really hard hitting opinions and then uh, really good stuff. And so I would like to see that personally. I'm like, oh, when Ryan posts, I, I, I read, right? I'm like, yeah. okay, I'm going to see what Ryan has to say. Um, yep. and it typically hits very well. So I'm almost thinking for you, you can even take the same text and just do a video and like literally reading yeah. what you've said on the freaking, yeah. on the thing, <laughs> you yeah. know? Yeah, and I should. Yeah, I should. We, we recorded a couple where we spent like an hour and just like kind of went through 15 or 20 topics or something and yeah. we're, chop we're chopping them up and you can see some of them on the, um, on the rep view page that we're doing, but yeah, we're definitely experimenting. We, we're always experimenting. Yeah. trying to understand what works and what doesn't and you know how it is sometimes things surprise you. And yeah yeah good and bad that's right. good and bad yeah it's always like it's the i call it like the content phenomena which is like stuff you think is going to be amazing is like always a flop and stuff right. that you post on the fly you think it's going to suck is like the stuff that right. always do so well right, right. it's right, like right. there's no like <laughs> you just yeah. never know it's crazy it's it's crazy yeah so yeah. I think Ryan, what people would get out of value that listen to this is I, I get a lot of questions of going, trying to go like zero to one in building an influencer program. Right. And so what I want to hear from you is like, how do you build one of these programs to, if you were to do it again today, how would you build it from zero to one? Let's talk about what budget would you use? Right. Like who would you target? And then what would yeah. be the cadence of posting? I know I've worked with you guys in the past and you had me yeah. do like one post a month. So it didn't like saturate the market, but like, how would you do that? So the people listening can walk away from this and be like, okay, Ryan's the man. I'm going to go implement yeah. like exactly what he, he mentioned here. Yeah. I would, I, you, you may have to remind me, you asked a few questions in there. I'll try and I'll try and remember them. Yeah. All of them. But I think, um, you know, first I would start with, so for us, yeah, like we're, we're pretty, we're pretty tight in terms of like knowing what return we want to get. Yeah. Okay. So like when we offer somebody some money, so like the first time we, we work with somebody, we'll, 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 we'll test almost anybody at a low cost. Right. Yeah. And, and we'll basically say, we'll pay you, you know, a few hundred bucks a post. If they have a larger audience, it might be a little bit more. Um, and, and let's just do three and let's just see how it goes. And if it goes really well, we, we will actually tell people how much, like how much traffic we got. We'll show them like, Hey, this is how many clicks we got. This is how many, this, this is how many that. Yeah. And the, and the reason we do that is because we just know like what we can and can't pay. And we want to be transparent, right? Transparency is obviously a, a yeah. theme for yeah. revenue generally. So, and, and most of the time it works out fine. Some people, you know, that, that can not be like, Oh, I'm, I, I have this audience and I would never do it for this. Well, that's okay too. If we don't, yeah. we might not work together. Um, and that's fine. But we, and I think the reason I say this is important for every business and company. You can't just spend money willy nilly, right? You have to understand, like, if you're going to pay an influencer to post, um, especially in an ongoing manner, like, what are you getting out of it? And it's, and it's even harder for us because we're, we're doing it not to drive revenue. We're doing yeah. it to drive 
users and, yeah. and, and ratings on RepView, knowing that if the more of that we generate, the, the bigger our network is. And then over time, it's easier for us to drive revenue through our commercial businesses that we have, like employers and hiring primarily. And then, you mm -hmm. know, we have another business that's just kind of selling data to researchers and things like that. But mm -hmm. that, that, that's two steps away from the ROI. And so, so then for us, it's like, well, we know we have a ratings acquisition cost target. And so we'll kind of know how much we'll pay. So the first thing I would say would be just really understand what ROI you need to get out of it. Um, because mm -hmm. you can end up, you can end up throwing away a lot of money, um, really quick, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, you, you know, and then, you know, other, other points to think about if you're, if you're thinking about an influencer program, you know, you, you have to try and get a, a, a little broader and not as deep in terms of the people. What I mean by that is, you know, having Andy post every day for a month, right? Yeah. It's not going to work, right? No, and even, no. Even, even once a month can be aggressive, right? Yeah. Um, and so yeah. We, we have a few that we might do once a month for a while, but really we're, you know, every couple months or every quarter is probably better. So then do you, you know, so, so you have to find a large enough influencer base. We might work with 25 or 30 at any, at any given time. Oh, wow. I was just going to ask how many you work with. So you yeah, work with maybe 25, 25 or 30 at any given okay. time, but they're not put, yeah. but, but we, and, and, but it's usually, usually not more than one per day will go out. And then rep view people are like, I see you guys everywhere. That, that, that's part of it, but it's also the organic posts that we do, um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that we get from people and, and my posts. So, so you, so you kind of need to be broad on influencer. And the other reason you need to be broad on your count is because they're just not all going to work even, you know, yeah. and, and, and you might post, you know, if you're, if you're working with a brand to do a post, it might blow up in month one and you feel like you, you, you post again in month two or month three or whenever you post again mm -hmm. and you feel like, oh, this one's even better and it does nothing. Right. It just, it's, yeah. you know, you know, that's yeah. just the nature of it. So you, you have to, um, you have to think about it like that and just kind of, we, we think about it like it's just part of our marketing strategy and it's a drumbeat of like, yep, let's just make sure each week we have a few, you know, influencers. And we also are strategic about mixing in, you know, if it's somebody new with a much smaller audience, okay. You know, we don't, we don't want that 10 days in a row. And then four, like big, you know, maybe we're four or five that have a larger audience. You want to spread those out from a traffic standpoint and awareness standpoint. Um, yeah, you know, so I, th I yeah. think that's also, um, also really important, um, to, to, to think about that mix. You, you just can't, I, I don't think that you can really have a successful influencer program ongoing if you're too reliant on like one or two on the medium that is LinkedIn. Mm, okay. Yeah. Yeah. We, we do work with, with, um, influencers on other channels. Um, but it's just the reality of it is that B2B sales, it, LinkedIn is where that's at. There's a few folks on like TikTok, a few folks on Insta, but it's just a much smaller, um, you know, so we might have two or three on each of those channels kind of versus 20 on, on LinkedIn. Five on LinkedIn. Wow. Um, I was just going to ask, so much... have you experimented with other channels? And it sounds we like, have. yeah, yeah. We, but LinkedIn we've seen, is the we've gold mine. Success. Yeah, you we've have. seen success on other channels okay. as well, um, but it's just there's just not as many of those influencers out there. Yeah, B two B is mostly LinkedIn, right? Like that's that's yep. where they're at. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Got it. Yep. And when did yep. you, dude? I have so many questions. Okay, so this is gold. I think we're getting into the the the, yep. the nitty gritty, which is awesome. So you're trying to. Even though it's not the same influencer, are you trying to, I think you mentioned you're trying to get out a post every day for rep view, but it could be from some, it's going to be from someone different, but it's at least once a day, you kind of have an influencer posting about rep view. Is that, that's kind of your goal right there, right? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. So, so okay. every day rep view, uh, business account will typically have two posts, I believe. And then we'll have like an influencer post as well mm -hmm. and then i usually post almost almost every day um and then we also will generally get an organic or two uh, posts that happen every day as well just from random people that like yeah. something about the, yeah the, the business
Nice. Yeah. Okay. And so every day, and then how that's LinkedIn. How about on the other channels? I'm guessing because there's l- less influencers, maybe you're trying to do once a week or like, what's that cadence typically look like? Yeah. We, we, I would say it's a couple times a week um, on Instagram. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's a couple of kind of like, you know, we, we, we've got a couple meme accounts that we work with on Instagram that just have, that are like sales memes. Um, God, and it's not rep view, but it's like one of the sales accounts that like tags rep view or something like that. Yeah. The, and yeah, they'll post a meme and we, we, we actually create almost all of our own memes, even the ones we give to the users or to the, Oh, to the really? Yeah, we create all of them. I create a lot of them myself. Like we, we will do it. <laughs> really? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. founder um, mode, right? Found, you've been hearing that whole That's right. It's founder, founder mode. mode. Yeah. I mean, I, yeah. I, I, I see something, yeah, I've been, I've been in sales for 25 years and, you know, <laughs> You know, I, I also, you know, I don't take myself too seriously most of the time as well. So I, I have a good eye for memes. And so we just, I see something, I send it in our Slack. I'm like, look at this one. Here's a couple ideas. And then we just kind of yeah. curate it. And, and sometimes we'll get stuff out like same day. Some, you know, we have a schedule, but sometimes we'll get stuff out. We're like, hey, this one's topical. We got to move. And then we'll send it to like, like on Instagram, a couple partners or like, um, you know, sales humor is a, is a great account. Oh, they're, they're amazing. Account. They're amazing. Um, yeah. Yeah. Yep. So we work with sales humor and they love, you know, they love the memes and, and, um, and them and the daily sales are two, two of the larger business accounts we work with. Um, and so, um, yeah, we, we, we would, I would say a couple times a week and then TikTok is, is maybe one a week, just simply from the standpoint of, we haven't been as successful finding, um, finding the right people to do it. We've got a couple on TikTok that have shown some promise lately. So we're kind of cautiously excited about that. Yeah. Interesting. And, and my question for you on this next is, is I think you have, uh, you have one person kind of managing like the content calendar for all these influencers, Mm -hmm. right? Like, Hey, we have, here's the bucket of 30 people. And then of those 30 people, Johnny's posting tomorrow, Sally's Thursday. And they're kind of like, they're managing that relationship, right? And being like, Hey, can you post on this day? Here's your link and all that. And you typically have someone just kind of running that, that whole process pretty much. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Is there anyone else that I'm missing? That's like kind of not part of that or is there another behind the scene? Not really. Uh, Okay. I mean, we're, we're, we're a small lean team. Um, Mm -hmm. We have 14 employees total. Uh, That's Gage. Uh, Gage is our social media. Yeah. So yeah. Gage is our social media kind of coordinator and he, he posts all of our rep use stuff across all of our channels, creates all the content, creates the, you know, whether it's video, video editing, all that. And he also maintains the influencer calendar um, yeah. and coordinates to make sure, you know, all the stuff that I talked about in terms of scheduling and like, he's mm-hmm. kind of, kind of managing that and knows like, yeah, we don't want somebody, you know, we kind of, you know, the, the, we don't want four whales in a row, so to speak, you know, mm-hmm. mix in your, mix in your trout and your minnows and, you know, mm-hmm. so yeah, the catfish and, and you know, yeah. 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 We use, we use Slack and he's got, you know, all the, all the typical like to, to communicate. And then we use notion for calendars, like influencer yeah. calendar type stuff. And um, yeah, it's, it's, it, it, he does a great job running all that really seamlessly. Yeah, no, he does a great job. Yeah, because when I when I worked with him in the past, I was like, oh, they're running a tight ship here. I have to like talk to Ryan about this whole thing yeah. at some point. This was like a year ago, and finally yeah. we made it happen. But um, yeah. that's super interesting. So you would say your your kind of level of success so far, just on how you've experimented, has been like one LinkedIn, which is kind of the obvious choice if you're doing B two B. Instagram, you know, a couple times a week, and then also t- you're kind of like getting into the whole TikTok world. Mm-hmm. Um, how about YouTube? Have you like, to- like, have you dipped your toes in the YouTube yet or anything? Cause I know that's kind of becoming a hot thing on the B2B side. We, we have, um, but not in a major way. So, I mean, we yeah. haven't, I think we've, we've looked at a couple of influencers and I think there's probably a couple things that we've done. And I think we've seen it as something that has promised. We did roll out our own YouTube channel, but we haven't really leaned in too much with it with like the shorts mm-hmm. as well. Mm-hmm. Um, and so we're starting to experiment with that. Um, you know, p- part of it too is like, because we're such a small lean team, right? It's like we, we just don't have, the, like for myself personally, even like, 
uh, Gage and the and and the team are they they, I think I have I think they created a RepView like Ryan at RepView TikTok and a Ryan at RepView Instagram. I probably have a personal. I don't have TikTok necessarily, but I have Instagram. I don't really use it, but and the, and the, and I was like, they're like, you need to have a presence on these channels, and I was like, well, I. I was like, I, I don't have the bandwidth to do it. I was like, yeah. if you guys, want to, if you guys <laughs> yeah. want to do it, I'm happy to like support and, and, and post. And so we're trying to start like the founder brand yep. in uh, yep. Instagram and TikTok. Um, and I think, um, you know, I think we've still struggled a little bit on Instagram to really get over the hump and like, get, I don't know if we have five or 10,000, somewhere in their followers. So it's not nothing, yeah. uh, but yeah. we haven't like, kind of hit a viral inflection point. And I think some of that's the type of content that we're posting as well, but which is really sales and, and business focused. Um, but I think YouTube would be like next up sort of thing for us. And, and we have experimented yeah. with it a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. That's what we're going to. I think LinkedIn, we've kind of figured out a good, uh, good cadence of stuff we're doing, not from influencer, just from founder brand perspective. Yeah. And then next, I think we're going to go to YouTube just because I like YouTube where it's more evergreen right yeah. where you evergreen content and it's like mm -hmm. the second largest search engine in the world right and so yeah. if you think about it i'm like okay how do we leverage that it's more evergreen we've got kind of this like linkedin thing down i think mm -hmm. uh, personally i search a lot of stuff on youtube i'm like oh what are people yeah. doing for x y and z you know so um yeah, yeah definitely video yeah. It, let me ask you this about the meme accounts yeah. what's the strategy there you're posting a meme and then on the meme, it has like, it just, is it just brand awareness is kind of your goal there? Or are you, are you actually in the like primary text linking to like a rep view page to see reviews of stuff? I guess I could go look, but like, you know, I've tried a couple yeah. of that and have failed miserably. So what's really like the, the key there, maybe it's the right accounts. Like, yeah, what's the, yeah. Yeah. I uh, I think I can get most of this right. I'm not as in the weeds, but I would say like, so if you look at Instagram, if you do an Instagram yeah. story, you can embed a link in there, I believe. Um, mm. But but really the meme is, is uh, our strategy would be have something like as funny, fun, ridiculous as possible to just drive virality first. Okay. Yeah. With, you know, and it'll have, it'll have a meme or it might be a video meme. It might be a, you know, a snapshot, but or an image and, and I'll have the refuge logo in there. Instagram, you, you can link, if it's a story, we can link the story. Um, uh. and so we'll be able to, we'll be able to track that, but, but, but it is really more like on Instagram or YouTube. It's like the, or, or Instagram or, or TikTok. If we do TikTok, it's really that brand awareness. And if we can get like the, the meme to go viral, we will see a lot of traffic from it. it we see it really in. sometimes. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes it will, it will be attributable through the, the direct link in the story. And then sometimes we'll just see the lift in traffic and we know like what our traffic, you know, you know who is. posts every day, right? Yeah. And, and yeah. so we'll be like, what, why do we have, well, why do we have that big spike in traffic from 8 PM last night till, till now? And it's like, Oh, and then we'll look, Oh, we did this on Instagram with this partner. Oh, that's probably what it is. And it'll be some, you know, 50, 50 traffic attributable, and then just a bump that we'll see. And we'll see, but we'll see significant bumps in our organic traffic when we have a big viral post as well, because like you're, you know, a lot of people will see it and be like, Oh, I'll check out RepView, but they just don't want to click that. They'll just go to Google and type in RepView. Really? So, I was just going to say, are people yeah. actually just like, go like typing in RepView after they see the, it it's on the fun. meme? Yeah, wow. So yeah. So we track, so, so we'll look at, I mean, we, we have estimates and, and same with, with TikTok. I don't think there's any way you can do that. The, the direct link people are TikTok partners and Instagram partners too. They'll include refu like in a link tree as, as one way to do it, but we just don't see a ton of volume come through there necessarily. Um, yeah. but with TikTok, if it goes really viral, we'll see the traffic. It'll just be through organic search and, and direct. Um, and mm. we'll know that it's from that. We'll know that it's from that video because usually like TikTok will go at a different time of day. Um, we'll do it later in the day and in the evenings and we'll see that spike later in the day. And so we'll be able to track and we'll be able to know, even though, you know, marketing attribution is a, is a, is a long challenge for many thousands. Oh yeah. Of yeah. It's a black hole. Yeah. yeah. And, and I think that's, it's always going to be like that. So, so you have to kind of 
have other means to understand if something is successful. And so we'll, yeah. we'll look closely at, at the, the other traffic sources, knowing what influencer campaigns were going on during that time. And I think we, we generally estimate even LinkedIn, right? If you see like, oh, that's a RepView partner post that they're paying, it might say brand partnership and it, you know, it's cl- some mm-hmm. of them are obvious that that link that's in there, you know, people click it, that's cool. We would probably estimate that we, we would we would um, estimate that the, the traffic is probably 60 to 100 percent more than the directly attributable traffic for most of them in some mm-hmm. in some mm-hmm. for the big ones for the small for like a really viral post. You know, mm-hmm. if, it's, if it doesn't get a lot of attention, it's not going to be much anyway. So it doesn't matter. But if it's something if it's something that's really viral, we know that a lot of people it's just the behavior that we see is that people won't click those links. They'll, they'll go directly to rep you. So we try and account for that as well. Interest. That's so crazy. Cause I was wondering, cause I think I've seen a, you guys like have your logo on a meme and I'm like, how do they get people to like go from the meme to, you know, yeah. like, and I'm like, I don't see a link anywhere. This is crazy. Yeah. And so it sounds like it still works, which is like just super interesting. And do they say anything in the primary or the text of the post, like the caption, about RepView, like, is there any strategies you have there? Like funny meme, you have your logo and then in the body, is there something of, of the caption that you guys try and do or what's that? Are you talking about like Instagram or which? Yeah, channel? Instagram, Instagram. Yeah, so so for Instagram, a lot of times, um, yeah, they'll, they'll, be, they'll be something in the body of the post. Um, that mentions yeah. you guys too. Right? Yeah, yeah, and it's usually something very short. Um, yeah. You know, like see, you know, see if you're paid fairly at RepView or, you know, something just very short and to the point, um, which we found works, works better. But, but at the end of the day, like there, there's, a, there's a conversion metric set in there, right. Where it's like meme with no link sentence underneath the, the image link, you know, it's, a, it, it becomes a numbers game from that standpoint. You know what I mean? Like they're, they're, yeah. it's just, so, so our whole goal would be, let's create the best content that people think is you know, funny, fun, funny, you know, or appropriate. Um, sometimes the content is like sal- salary data as well. And that works well in many cases also. Yeah. Just, just a few data. Um, yeah. And if I were to work with one of these accounts and I'll probably offline email you, Ryan, and be like, Hey, yeah. who should I work with? But, um, you know, if I were to like, what's the, like the budget for each kind of meme that you're, you're trying to target there to make it worth it. Um, and again, it goes back, it's dependent on your, every business. Right. But like for y'all, what's, you know, for budgetary purposes, what are you paying? And you don't have to I give mean, me an exact it, number, but yeah, I mean, no, it's fine. It really varies significantly based on the, the size of the account. And I, I don't, I don't know off the top of my head, some of the Instagram details necessarily, but, um, like with LinkedIn, somebody that's got a 10 K or less following might just say, Hey, do you want to do two posts over the next two months? We'll give you 200 bucks each and we'll provide the content. Yeah. Like it's test out. And, and most people are like, yeah, I'll try it. And then what we tell them too, is like, Hey, based on the results, we might offer you more money, like to yeah. keep going. Right. Yeah. But generally. Right. And, you know, and then, and then we, most of them, we also say it's like, and, and, and then, you know, somebody, you know, we don't have many that we pay more than like very few. That's probably like that kind of four figures is kind of a stretch for us, but yeah, um, maybe a couple here and there, but it's, it's not many. Um, and then, um, you know, no, we, we typically don't do long-term contracts with folks either, or just like, Hey, if you do three the, months or something, right. Or a couple, yeah, or something like that. Usually the first we'll do like, Hey, let's, we'll give you a, you know, two, 300 bucks, depending on what you're, following is um and and for each post and let's let's agree that we'll do three and then we'll evaluate yeah. and then if it works let's kind of do it on a monthly basis and or or quarterly basis yeah. and then um yeah they could turn it off or you know whatever it, it's pretty um it, it, it's it's pretty easy it's not some kind of heavy engagement yeah and are you guys so you guys got this down or you've got a whole system in place for it, right? Yeah. Like, which is, and I've seen oh, yeah. it. I'm like, okay, this is the, this is a key strategy for them. Is that mostly what you're focusing on the influencer stuff to, to drive traffic to rep view? Or are you guys doing cold email, cold calling? Yeah. You're a nimble team. So like, 
or ha has just the influencer marketing for your product been the best bang for your buck? It's been, it's been the best bang for our buck. We don't, we don't do any cold emailing or cold calling. Um, we, we've That's thought crazy. about it. I mean, with emailing, <laughs> with, with emailing, I think we could get a system that I, we, we kind of have some stuff behind the scenes, some operational teams, some offshore stuff that, that we use for a lot of different things. I, I just don't believe with the email rules, the way they are today, like emailing salespeople about, Hey, go join rep few. We would be violating most of those if they haven't provided consent. Yeah. Um, and so we've yeah. avoided that. And I think it would, it would be hard to get efficient enough because the value of a rating for us is just a rating. It's just data and we get a ton of data and then we got to sell, you know, our commercial products that's based on all this stuff and users. And it's just hard to get an ROI for those kind of manual things. So really where our focus areas are, influencers work really well, our own, um, you know, kind of influencer like accounts work well. And then we're working more on kind of network effects and SEO is kind of a big, a big part of what our current focus is around. Um, we're going to have a lot of stuff coming out in the next couple of months related to jobs. There's going to be a, a significant increase in the count of jobs on our website over the next three to four months. So uh, we probably have seven, 800 jobs, sales jobs on there. I would expect that to maybe 10 X um, in the next wow. three to five months. Yeah. Um, and then, and then there's kind of a network effect involved in that. And then we are um, actually in the process of expanding into medical sales. So med device, pharma, biotech, healthcare and hospitals. Um, so we've already laid some of the foundation for that. So if you're a medical salesperson, you go to RepView a year ago, it's like, well, this is for tech salespeople. I'm not an enterprise yeah, account executive. Yeah. Now you can go there and when you select your role, it's like, I'm a clinical territory manager for orthopedics, you know, and so that's already in yeah. place. We're starting to roll out salaries. That's a growth strategy. I mentioned SEO, tough nut to crack, long play there. Uh, but that's another strategy. We, we got a few other things in the hopper, but I think like the influencer piece, I think is a nice foundational item for us that will, it, 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 it works. Do. It's consistent. Yeah. Um, it's not that expensive. We can make the ROI work because we manage it tightly. Um, and, and like I said earlier, we like giving people an opportunity to monetize some of the work that they put in to establish even 10,000 followers. Um, and we like being a part yeah. of that. Yeah, that's great. And I have another tactical question for you in that. And, and this is probably a question a lot of people are thinking about right now, which is for the content of the posts, right? Mm -hmm. There's so many factors on what's gonna work, what's not gonna work. Typically on LinkedIn, it doesn't matter how many ha followers you have. If you have a banger post, it will do yeah. well, right? Just yeah. like on Instagram, if you have a sick meme, it, it'll it probably do pretty well. You have to have a good size account for it. But, yeah. you know, I think on LinkedIn more than any other network, uh, what's your what's your mindset when it comes to do you give them something to post or let them do their own posts? Either. Um we, we'll do both. I mean, I think we like to see it first just to kind of make sure it's totally on brand and whatnot. But if, if people have ideas, like so, some folks, some folks want to do their own. Some folks are like, Hey, can you send me something? Um, sometimes, you know, and, and we've in the past, we've been like, you know, we'll give them like one or two of my posts that I've done and say, just kind of, <laughs> I did that. <laughs> oh, that? Uh yeah, I did that. I did that with Gage actually when I was doing stuff with you guys back in the day, or like you know over yeah. a year ago or something. And I was like, um, what I did, and I was because for me, I'm like, Gage, you guys already have posts that you know do well. Let's just yeah. kind of reformulate those. And I think a few people actually messaged you and were like, Hey, this guy's plagiarizing. Uh, and yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember that. Yeah, I remember that. And I'm like, I think oh, they no, posted no, no. somebody. Yeah, somebody commented on it. And yeah, my take on that, like. Yeah, I, I don't think I'd like necessarily appreciate if somebody just randomly took my post and posted it as their own because I it's, I don't know if it's really happened to me. It, it probably has. I may not have even known it's noticed it. But in this case, like we're advertising for the business and like yeah, I I don't care. Like I really don't care. Like I, I'm <laughs> fine with it. Like, I don't care is, either. Like right. I was like, yeah, I know it works. I'm just gonna take Ryan's thing because this is yeah, like, this is the yeah, yeah. Totally, yeah. totally fine. Totally fine yeah. with that. Um, you know, like I said, I bet you're, you have a very large audience, you know, I have a pretty large audience too. And, and like, I, I believe like there's way less overlap in our audiences than you or I, like you would think actually. So, um, I think yeah. that's one of the reasons why influencer programs, if you're a business and you're thinking about, should I do an influence? I think that's one of the reasons why they, they work well. And I, 
I don't know about other channels, but I bet other channels too. I bet there's like two accounts that look like, oh, it's a sales meme account here. It's a sales meme account here. I bet the overlap is less than what you think in those, in those accounts. Yeah. Yeah. It might be. Yeah. Cause I, so I'll see a new one every day and I'm like, oh shit, I've never yeah. seen that one. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, sales humor, I think is the biggest one, right. And all that fun stuff. So, um, man, this is interesting. Well, thank Ryan. This has been crazy. Cause it's been yeah. like a whole master class, I think in, <laughs> in influencer yeah. marketing for B2B, because I'm going to be quite honest. I haven't seen, as I mentioned at the beginning, going full circle here, I haven't seen anyone good do it like y'all. Now we kind of have all the inside tactics yeah. to that. Right. And so, man, now let me ask you this. You're going into medical. That's tip. Yeah. That's basically a, not a new product, but a whole new segment. Yeah. I don't see a lot of medical device influencers. Not. <laughs> so no. so we, what yeah. are you thinking there? Right? Like what's so, going to. Yeah, we, we've, we've got a list, right? So like whenever I see anybody, I capture Book it and I, I send it to Slack. I'm like, Hey, this could be somebody. And we yeah. add it to the list. So there, there's not right. Medi- so, so tech salespeople, what are they doing right now? They're sitting on LinkedIn, screwing around. Hopefully they're making calls. Hopefully they're on a call. Hopefully they're closing something. If they're not, they're probably on LinkedIn. Medical salespeople, I use this this kind of phrase all the time. They're they're heading down the interstate in their Ford Explorer with a bunch of suitcases in the back filled with equipment, yeah. going from doctor to doctor. Right? They're not on yeah. LinkedIn now, right? So yeah, so that's why there's not that's why there's not that many influencers. They can't. There's not people to influence. Um, you know, yeah. we we found some. We're gonna do it. We we've got some other partnership opportunities that we're looking at for medical sales. Um, as well, I think that also brings up the opportunity for us to create kind of a community. Um, there you go. Yeah, you know ourselves, and so there, yeah. there's there's a few things that we're going to do, but it, it takes time, right? Like we we say it like if we start collecting great data now, how do we monetize that data with companies? Maybe they want to hire. Maybe they want to do things with RepView on a partnership standpoint. Like that's a year from now, right? You got to you know it's like the today is the best day to plant a tree, I guess, is, or whatever, they, you know, whatever, whatever they yeah, say. Yeah, that saying is, yeah, yeah. 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 Well, there's that tw- Charlie Munger quote I heard recently, which is like, um, it, like, there's no money in buying and selling, the money's in waiting, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. Or, yeah. And it's like, oh, okay. Like, simple quote, but I'm like, yeah, interesting, which kind of like is, is a marketing quote, I think, too, right? It's the like, you know, when you think about it, it's not like doing these quick posts, like once a day that you're going to make a crazy amount of money, but that over time and waiting to build that kind of moat, um, as y'all have on the influencer side. Right. Um, so anyways, man, this has been great. So you've got some strategies. You're going to work on the medical sales stuff. And then are y'all, let me ask you this. Are you guys bootstrapped? Are you bootstrapped coming or did you raise cash? Okay. We're not, we we have raised about $6 million, uh, in BC. Yeah. Got it. So, Got although, it. Uh, uh, yeah, we're, 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 um, very, very close right now, like several months probably, uh, from being cash flow positive. So we're right, we're yeah. right there. So we'll get there probably possibly by the end of this year, we'll be cash flow positive. Um, if not, it'll be early next year. Uh, nice. then we'll have optionality. I mean, the markets are tough. So, you know, we want to be in a position where would we raise more money? Maybe, maybe not. Uh, that's to be determined. Um, I'm pretty, yeah. I'm pretty frugal um, in general. Um, the, the the reality of it is to create a network effect business like Repview, like it's it, it's very it's 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 cost of, it's cost intensive because you can't really mo- you can't really extract dollars from the network effect from the model yeah. for a few years yeah. until you get sufficient. And we are able to right, yeah. obviously we're close to cash flow positive. We have 14 employees. So now we're in a position where we are able to extract money from this network effect. Uh, but the first few years, it's really, really hard. And that was the decision was, if we want to do this, we'll need to raise capital. Um, mm-hmm. and so so mm-hmm. we did, but now given macroeconomic conditions, we, we haven't taken, you know, the, the seed round was $5 million. We did that was two and a half years ago. Um, and so you kind of made the decision that we need to get to cash flow break even, and then we'll have optionality. Yeah. Yeah. And in your vision, it, it sounds like it's not, you started to kind of niche in tech sales and then you're, you want to go to medical sales and then, you know, maybe like door to door sales, you know, all those other, like, so you kind of can get all these different categories. I don't know if there's a money in a lot of them, but is that your vision or are you going to kind of stick to two initially? 
Well, over time we will expand. I don't, you know, I think that yeah. the vision is really about um, solving professional matchmaking at scale from a, from an employer standpoint, the, the vision and the mission for users is making mm -hmm. better career decisions, right? Yeah. On the employer side, on the product side, specific to employers, which is kind of the, the most product we're most well known for is really like, like I said, how do you solve professional, and I say professional matchmaking versus like a personal matchmaking, like a dating app. Like yeah. how do you solve the professional version of that at a massive scale without having recruiters, without a lot of manual intervention, without this. And and the reason that we think that we're in a really good position to do that is because of the data that we have, not only yeah. on users, but on companies. Like we have better, if, you, if, if a, a recruiter is on LinkedIn and they see your profile, they know where you work, what your role is, and how long you've been there. That's yeah. it, right? Yeah. Well, what if I could tell you their comp, what their deal size is, what their sales cycle length is, what they care about in their careers, what the buyer persona is, yeah. what the industry is. Like yeah. we have so much of that. And then we have all that and more on companies. And so when you think about dating apps, the reason those have been successful is because somebody spends 45 minutes filling out all this detailed information. Well, that's not really going to work. Nobody like, really wants to do that, right? Mm -hmm. For a job site, right? Nobody wants to. Yeah. So how do you how do you extract that information on both sides of that equation with the least amount of effort possible and do it at a massive scale? And if you solve that, then you can then you have the underlying foundational elements of professional matchmaking at scale. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. we think we have that. And so we're, we actually we have a beta right now with some of our customers um, for this product that we're that we're working on nice not nice little preview here Let's yeah go. yeah no this is yeah. good and and you know for you you're in this world of sales and how much people are making who's hitting quota and you kind of see all that data right like yep. from my perspective anecdotal anecdotally with distribute right, <laughs> digital, digital sales room platform um really like notion for sales people is really what we are but if if you look at like our deals, like it's freaking hard right now, right? Yeah. <laughs> like it is tough. Like, and this is coming from someone, you know, I, I was early at outreach and been in this whole world and I'm like, holy shit, like doing, selling us other software companies right now is very hard. Like they yeah. were, they've been oversold too, is kind of what I feel like, right? Everyone's just kind of yeah. like, like in like, oh, it's saturated, you know, like, yes, things can get done, yeah. but it's very, it's way more harder than it was in 2017, 18. You know, of course, 2021, when people were buying everything, which I think is yep. part of the problem. Um, so I'm feeling it, but I want to get your sense from all the data that you've seen. Yeah. What are you seeing? Right. Because you have all the numbers. Like, what's your I would love to see your whole take on, on everything going on. Yeah, I, I would say that um, your your assessment is accurate. I think that um, it was really easy for a while. It got really, really hard. I think it's leveled off but it's leveled off at hard, right? Like yeah. it's not like, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> we, 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 the data is telling us it's not necessarily getting worse, but it's getting still hard. And I think a lot of people haven't yet adjusted fully to the fact that it's getting really, really hard. And I think that many companies realize that they overhired. That's why you saw a lot of the layoffs. And yeah. we, we've seen some signals in the last few months, like on the hiring side that it might, you know, maybe that's getting a little bit better but we're not really seeing it as much in the quota attainment metrics yet. Um, so I think we're, where we're at, like, you know, we have a hiring product, right? So, you know, we got, we got crushed on that for six or 12 months when things went south. Um, and where we're seeing now is like maybe a little bit of bounce back. Um, but the overall, to your question, the overall selling environment is, 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 is hard. It's very difficult. It's not anything like it was to your point, 2020 or 20, you know, 2021. Um, and I don't see that like jumping back up. There could be a slow climb. And I use this phrase a lot. You, you're always taking the elevator down and the stairs back up. Uh, and you know, we might be in reach of the stairs, but I don't think we've climbed too many of them just yet. Yeah. Oh, I like that analogy. Yeah. I like that analogy. And it's, that's what I'm feeling. And I'm like, am I, do I just suck at this now or what is going on? <laughs> like, What's happening? You know? And, um, 
And that's where, you know, my head's at. And so I'm glad the data kind of resonates with that as well, which is like, yes, it's, it's, it's plateaued at hard, which I think a lot of people have felt as well. And Mm -hmm. on top of that too, you have like, what's interesting, this AI, we're building software products now. It's, you know, I I came from being an engineer. So I look at the way we build now and I'm like, dude, I could spin up something that used to take me three weeks and three hours, which is just insane. You know, and so I look at that and I'm like, okay, now what's happening too is it's becoming like software is becoming more of a commodity. And because it's becoming a commodity, how do you win? Distribution and brand, right? Which is like Mm -hmm. exactly what you have guys kind of started with early, which is why I'm like, oh, Repi is kind of like on the great trajectory there with the influencer marketing. And so that's kind of where my head's at now too, is like, we have to be a media company, right? At the the end of the day is like, that's how Mm -hmm. we have to do it because someone can come and build what we build and you know, yeah, but well, yeah, super quickly, right? You should always think about what is what is your your strategy around moats, right? Like, you know, if your moat is this a widget, you're probably not gonna last too long. If your moat is we're, you know, we have a really good go to market, like that's gonna be disrupted as well. So, do it, you know, what what is your moat? Like for us, we think about the moat in terms of you know data um and yeah. longevity like for us what's valuable in our data is not only the data but the history of the data so every month mm. and quarter that goes on our moat gets bigger um you know because we have an, we have other commercial businesses where we sell data um you know and, and history is important um it's hard to sell that stuff when you don't have much of it um so so moats are are, are really important um and and soft really really good software is hard to really call that it's going to be harder and harder to call that a moat in the future because of the ability to spin stuff up which has been it's been contract compacting for probably 20 years now like going back to like the first you know hyperscale or cloud computing where you don't have Mm -hmm. to have a closet for full of servers to to start a software company that was like the first step where you can shared and and now the next phase that we're seeing is like, well, the coding is becoming so much easier with Copilot, and then will it t- will it be not even a Copilot, the pilot? So like the software stuff that, that's going to be interesting to monitor. Um, and I think go to market, smart go to market operators can can replicate go to market. Um, yeah, yeah, for emotion. sure. Yeah. yeah, and it's it for sure. And you know, right now I think the phase we're in is like. Um, you, you probably remember this. It used to be like, how do I find the 10 X engineer, right? Mm-hmm. That's like really solid and all that. And now it's like, how do I find the 10 X marketer is kind of where, mm-hmm. I, where it's like what I see, right? It's like someone that can figure something out, get things distributed, build the influencer program, get, you know, get the word out. Like, and I feel like that's kind of where we're shifting, mm-hmm. um, there, which is just super interesting, man. But Hey, this is, I know you probably have to run. I know I do in a minute here. Uh, Ryan, but dude, this has been amazing. Um, I, you know, we did a couple of things, influencer marketing, freaking masterclass, talked a little bit about the state of sales and then, um, man, I'm going to hit you up offline for some, some partners that you would recommend. And then also shoot you you, me your address. Cause I'll, I'll send that in a note. Cause I want to send you a nice gift for coming on. So yeah, no Um, problem. Yeah, awesome. man. Well, yeah, yeah, it's great, great meeting you, man. Yeah. Yeah. Great chatting with you. Yeah. I'm, I'm here. So ping me whenever, if you need anything. Yeah. Yeah, man. man. Same here, dude. Well, thank you so much, man. I appreciate it. And then, um, Ryan, this will also go out. Uh, I have my newsletter is 31,000 people. So we're going to, once oh, cool. we will probably have this done editing either next week or the following week and I'll have it go out and then I'll, I'll send you this Riverside recording too. Yeah. And you'll get all, the whole clip. So your team can click, clip it up yeah. and, you know, do all that stuff too. Yeah. We'd love that. Yeah. We, we've got, yeah, we, we've got folks. We'll, 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 we'll cut it out and find some good clips too and, and share it out there. Yeah. Let's do it, man. You're the man, right? Hey, great meeting you, dude. I'll chat with you soon. All right. Thank you so much, man. Have a good chat soon. Yep.